Okay, so welcome to these videos, and uh, this one in particular is incredibly important. Forces and motion sets the tone for the rest of your physics. Forces and motion deals with um, you know how things move or don't move, which is pretty much all of physics actually, and all of chemistry if you start to think about it that way. Uh, so we're going to start with the basics. Um, some of you might remember some of these from grade nine. Uh, for those of you that don't, don't panic. I'd like you to take some notes. Uh, pen and paper has got to be by your side. Maybe a calculator as well. And uh, guys, you've got to practice this. It's absolutely important. Okay, so if you're taking a look at forces, this is the guy. Um, Isaac Newton was the guy that basically invented most of this physics. In fact, it's called Newtonian physics. So obviously, forces are going to be measured in Newtons. Um, you know, imagine having something named after you. Sort of, I mean, I would be like Jubez. Imagine you measured force in Jubez. Um, pretty strange concept. Okay, so this is the part that actually all of us really know. From a very early age, you know that you can push or pull things. Um, so we've got this person down at the bottom there. They don't look too happy, but uh, they've got a shopping trolley over there. And uh, if they push the shopping trolley, they'll know they'll go forward. If they pull it, they could go backward. Um, something could pull them up or pull them down. And this is the way that we start to move around stuff. Um, now, what do I mean by contact or non-contact? Well, pretty much all of you is exerting a contact force on something. A contact force means that the two objects must be touching. Um, so an example would be, uh, at the moment, if you're sitting down or standing up, uh, there is a floor that you are touching at the moment. So that is a contact force. Now, the most important forces are actually non-contact forces. Non-contact forces are examples like uh, gravity. Gravity is pretty important. Uh, magnetism, electrostatics, these are all examples of things which do not need to touch to exert a force on one another. Okay, so um, time for a little bit of business side of this things. Um, forces are indeed vectors. Um, now, most of you don't remember your grade 10 stuff, so I'm going to refresh your memories a little bit. So forces are vectors. And what that means is that forces have got magnitude and uh, most of you don't actually know what this word means. Magnitude is how much you have. That means that I can have something of great magnitude. Uh, one of the things I uh, strive for is a great magnitude of money in my bank account. So magnitude is pretty important. It's how much of something I have. Um, you know, you can talk about magnitude of pretty much anything that can be measured. So you can talk about magnitude of an earthquake on the, the scale. You can talk about the magnitude of my bank account in rands or dollars. And um, the other important part about vectors is that magnitude goes hand in hand. And this is the thing which makes a vector special, is that they have got a direction. Now, the other thing which is really cool about forces, and vectors in general, is that you can represent forces using arrows. Okay, now arrows are pretty cool because you can just draw them very easily. Now, the way that you represent a bigger magnitude of something is by using an appropriate length. And obviously, direction is something which arrows do pretty well. You know, that's what they're for. You point things with an arrow. So what we're going to start taking a look at is we're going to try and see if we can not figure out how to draw vectors on these. Um, this gives us immense power. Uh, when you're starting to take a look at any physics example, you've got to make sure that you can represent the magnitude and the direction of the forces or any vectors. Okay, so here we've got a box, a present maybe from uh, Christmas or whatever. So it tells me some important information. We've got a box of five kilograms. That's pretty handy. We know how much is inside there. Um, not sure how many presents are five kilograms. Towards the Earth by gravity. So now we know where the force is coming from. We also know the mass of the box, which is going to tell us how much the Earth is pulling on it. Gravity is a non-contact force. Now, how do I start to represent the forces acting on this thing? Okay, here's a pretty good way to do it. You use an arrow which is proportionate to the size of the force. Now, I'm not entirely sure how much force there is, and there is a very easy way to calculate this. And there it is. Uh, force of gravity is equal to mass times, here we go, so mass multiplied by the gravitational constant on whatever planet you're on. Since we're on Earth, that is 9,8 meters per second squared. So let's quickly do this together. So I've told you that force of gravity is, um, you know, something that you can calculate if you've got the mass. So let's do exactly that. So I'm going to do this quickly with you. So force of gravity is equal to the mass of the object, which is 5 kilograms, multiplied by 9.8. Now, if you do a quick little bit of... 
of mental maths, you'll find that uh, this force is actually equal to 49 newtons. There we go. So we've got 49 newtons of downward force thanks to Mother Earth and gravity. Okay, so we've just calculated how to find out the weight of the object. Now, please don't use W for the symbols of weight. Please. Okay, because W is for work later on. Okay, now this is where things get a little bit confusing for some. Um, usually you use a free body diagram. Now let me just explain what a free body is. It's actually a diagram where you are quite literally free of the body of the object. So we've still got a box of 5 kilograms which is pulled towards the earth by gravity. And uh, here's a weird thing, you don't actually show the box. All you do is you show a little round dot and that is the center of your object. Now the other rule which is really important for a free body diagram is that not only do you represent the body with a dot is that you uh, actually have all of the forces going out of this dot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through the same diagram and we're going to talk about um, you know, how this box is pulled and pushed by things around it. Okay, so what I've done here is I've drawn in the dot and I've drawn in the uh, force which is pulling downwards. And um, I'd, I'd really like you to get into this practice of putting in the actual size of the force because if we know it, we should put it on our diagram. Now there's something else which is missing from this free body diagram and that's a proper label. Um, you will be assessed on this. Um, it's absolutely important that you know how to give a good label for this. So now my handwriting I'm pretty sure you've picked up is not the neatest. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type it out for you. I'll be back with you in a second. And through the magic of technology, there it is. So the force of gravity on box. Now, let me just show you the two parts of a really good label. So first of all, you say force of what? Now it is a force of gravity. So you're saying where the force comes from. And all of your forces should end in the object which you're concerned about. And in this case, it's a box which is being pulled towards the Earth by gravity. So force of gravity tells me where the force comes from and box tells me what it is acting on. Something else pretty important, let's make sure that you're always putting in your, uh, your force uh, amount, your magnitude, if you have it, please put it in your labels. Guys, you cannot just do shorthand on labels. You're being marked on your ability to identify where forces come from and what they are acting on. Okay, so here's the other tricky thing about objects. Sometimes when I've got like a box sitting on a table, I've got my force which is acting downwards with 49 newtons. Um, here's a really weird thing, is most boxes don't just fall forever. There is actually a table which is underneath them. Now what happens when you rest something on a table? The table is actually going to push back and very often I get this sort of reverse force which acts upwards. Now when you start studying Newton's laws it becomes fairly obvious where this comes from but you know for a fact that the book or the table or the, the objects, most of the objects are not actually moving and here's the reason why. There's an upwards and a downwards force which is equal in size. Okay, so we're back at this diagram where we've got a 5 kilogram object with the downwards force. And just a reminder that this is the force of gravity. Okay, so let's just put in that label there. Okay, so it's a force of gravity on box. The other thing which I told you to put in is uh, the actual, actual size of here. So that's 49 newtons acting downwards on the box. Now what we've got to do is we've got to make sure that we're showing the uh, force that the table exerts back on the box. So when you put a box on the table, the table is going to push backwards. So let's try, try and see. I actually want you to pause the video for a second and try and see if you can put in the other force. Now, if you've got something that looks a little bit like that, it means that you're listening and you're doing pretty well. Now, how do I label this thing? Well, it's actually really easy. And there it is. It's the force of the table, which is pushing back on the box. Notice how both of these are acting on the box. We're not concerned about the force on the table. We're not concerned about the force on the earth. We're not concerned about you know peace in the Middle East. This is not what we're after. We're just talking about issues which pertain to the box. Now, a lot of grade 11s and 12s really get stuck on this. They start talking about all the other objects. Guys, if you're drawing a free body diagram, I'm only concerned about things which are acting on a five kilogram box. You don't draw the box in a free body diagram. Notice how even though a push on the bottom of the box is represented, it's coming from the center and going outwards. Now that's the important thing about a free body diagram. Okay, so now I'm pretty sure that you figured out that every time you put something on a surface, it's going to push back. Now that's actually got a name. And it's called the normal force. Okay, now it's not called the normal force because it's normal. 
it's a normal force because a normal is a line which is drawn at 90 degrees to the surface. So if you start taking a look at different examples of normals to any surface, so let's say for instance I've got a box over here, it's pushing on a surface, so the surface is going to push backwards and it's going to push up at an angle of 90 degrees. Now any object, even if you are starting to push downwards on it, that object is still going to push backwards. Well, it's not the object that's going to push backwards, it's the surface that is always going to push back at 90 degrees. Even when the object is sitting on a slope, please make sure that you understand that always 90 degrees to the surface is where the force normal will be. Sometimes in shorthand you'll actually see it labeled as Fn, for obvious reasons. Okay, so force normal. There we go. So force normal is this upward force which is pushing away from the surface of the object. Now, that is what I'm talking about when I talk about a normal force. Now, in some cases, it's exactly the same size as gravity. So in this case, we've got gravity down, force of gravity is pushing down over there, and uh, we've got the force normal which is reacting to that. But what happens if I've got an applied force over here, which is acting slightly downwards? Okay, so force applied is pushing downwards. This force normal is actually going to be larger than force gravity. So I'm actually going to represent that over there because this surface is being pushed on some extra. So I know in this case that force normal is going to be slightly larger than force gravity. Now I want you to think about that for a second. Force normal is how hard the table pushes back. If you push extra on the table from the top, and that's due to my applied force, that means that the table is going to have to push extra hard back. What about this one on the right hand side here? What about the one which is on a slope? So force gravity is pulling downwards over there. So there's my force of gravity. Is force normal bigger or smaller than force gravity? Now we're not going to go into much detail over here, but what you'll find is that if you're on a slope, you'll find that force normal is actually less than gravity because they don't push directly against each other. And that brings up a really interesting point. And that's, you know, how do I start to visualize all of these forces all in one? To do that, we need to take a look at some examples. Okay, so here's my first example. We're going to draw a labeled, and this is really important, free body diagram of a two kilogram mass piece resting on a flat table. So here's my table. There's a two kilograms. That's information that I need. I cannot just simply draw my forces on there. What I've actually got to go do is um, get yourself a ruler. I'm going to do this really messily because this is always the first step in doing any sort of physics. Your free, free body diagrams won't ever be worth more than you know three or four marks. But what they give you is visualization of the types of forces acting on this. Okay, so we've got a force which is acting downwards, which is force gravity. And the table is probably pushing backwards. So the table is going to give us a force normal, which is roughly the same size. Okay, now that is not properly labeled. One of the ways that you can actually do this to keep your diagrams very neat is you can actually start to make a little bit of a key somewhere else. Okay, so a nice way to do that. So Fn is, um, so there's a table, and uh, there we go, let's just write that in. So this is the table on the box. So we've got this mass piece. So we've got this mass piece over there, and it's a box in this case. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Now that counts as a full label. So if you just want to give a, um, this is actually a really nice, neat way of doing this. So we can say forces. Fn is the table on the mass piece. Hopefully your writing is a little bit neater than mine. What about force of gravity? So this is uh, gravity. on mass piece. You'll notice how it always ends in mass piece. And this gets much, much faster as you go. So that's pretty simple. That's all they're looking for. And the places which they're going to give marks for, these two arrows need to be roughly the same size because we know that they are. This is a stationary object. And we give a full label which shows where the force comes from and what it is acting on. Something which is still missing from this diagram, however, is the actual size of these forces. Um, so this is something that you should, if you can calculate them, you should actually put in. So in this case, we've got a mass piece, and it was 2 kilograms. So that's 19.6 newtons. You say m times g to get that. And the force normal in this case, because it's sitting on a flat surface, 
is also 19.6 newtons. Okay, so let's move on to our next example. Okay, now here's our second example. Um, it's a little bit more complex. We've got an object which is moving in, um, in the horizontal plane. It's going to be moving left and right. It says draw a free labeled free body diagram of a 5 kilogram trolley being pulled along the floor by a rope at constant velocity by a 6 newton force. So that means that this object is moving along the floor at constant velocity by some sort of 6 newton force. Okay, so let's start off by just drawing in our forces. Um, I want you to stop the video and try for yourself and then I'll show you. Okay, so I hope you managed to figure out that there were actually four forces acting on this thing. Okay, so which four forces were there? Well, I've got force of gravity. Now, I'm sure you'll see the advantage of using a key rather than writing all the force, forces directly on the diagram. I've got the normal force which comes from the surface or from the wheels. I've got the applied force which is FA or FAP. Now there's something else here as well. It says that it's being pulled at a constant velocity. Now this is one of the biggest problems that grade 12s have. They can't see the things which are not told to them directly. How can I be applying a force to something and it's not speeding up? Well, here's your answer. Force of friction. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this diagram. Let's label it properly. Let's make sure that we've got everything in there. Okay, so here we've got all of our forces. Now the one thing which we haven't done is we haven't put in any of our sizes. Okay, well, we know that force applied is a 6 newton force. So that means that our force of friction has also got to be a roughly 6 newton force. Force of gravity. Right, we knew there was a 5 kilogram block, so that's 49 newtons. M times G will do that for you. And then force normal, again, because it's sitting on a horizontal surface, is also 49 newtons. Now, you'll start to notice that all of these kind of add up in some way to zero. And that's something that's going to come back a little bit later on. Let's give this a decent key. So let's talk about all of our forces which are acting on the object. I want to see this from you in your exams as well. So there's Fn, Fg, right, and Ff, and of course Fa. Okay, now each one of these needs a full label. Now you might get a little bit annoyed by this, but it's pretty important. So you can say that this is the surface on trolley, because we're dealing with something on a trolley. And that was the normal force. You can label it force normal if you'd like. And this is gravity. It gets a little bit long in this place because you, you're constantly saying the same thing. So gravity on trolley. And what else? We've got frictional force. So this is friction. Now the examiners will actually allow you to just say friction, but I prefer that you get into good habits and just say friction on trolley. So everything is just on trolley, on trolley all the time. So this is applied force, applied force. This is where the force is coming from. So applied force on trolley. Okay, so pause this, take some notes, and uh, we're going to go back to class now.